Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and yes, that's a used Chevy Volt battery pack which I recently purchased. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took it apart and then used cells from it to rebuild into a custom battery pack for another electric vehicle, and you'll see what that vehicle is by the end of this video. There's a Chevy Volt battery pack, and the chain just slipped on the hook, so it's hanging a little funny. Um, I just got it off the trailer and I'm gonna put it down so I don't kill myself here. And indeed it was a lot easier to move once I had it sitting on the base of the engine hoist and I could just push it straight into my garage. Then I put it on a pair of moving dollies so I could slide it around as needed. Now of course we do have to talk about safety, 360 volts DC, that can kill you. So don't mess around with this kind of stuff unless you know what you're doing and you're experienced. To take it apart, first thing I got to do is pull out all these little bolts. Uh, that is a 10 millimeter, so I'll take all those out. And in this end here, under this gasket, we've also got some more bolts. And then us up here, this is the uh, the kind of the main power disconnect. Of course, that was pulled out before I even got the battery. Uh, this takes a T30 tech bit. So all I'm going to do is break up the pack going from one bus bar to the other end of it. Um, just for example, uh, this connection here and this connection here both have the same potential because this bus bar goes down and it connects the two. So if I put a metal bar across the two of these, nothing's going to happen because they're already connected. So typically that's what I do is I remove a pair and then pull out the bus bar. No worries about electric shock or anything. Of course, it's always smart to use uh, non-conductive tools uh, anyways. And I'm okay with using power tools for loosening, but not tightening. And once those electrical connections are disconnected, um, this, um, the various bus bars can just be pulled completely out of the way. It's kind of funny, these are not particularly heavy. It's uh, pretty flexible because, um, you know, it's just not uh, high current stuff because it's high voltage stuff. Okay, this is what the battery pack looks, uh, looks like more or less stripped down. So I got the cover off and then I pulled off all the bus bars, you know, of course, being careful at those connections because the battery still has juice. Um, and then I disconnected the wire harness, so this is all, uh, it's mostly the BMS stuff, but it's all little connectors that go into these, uh, various ports, like, uh, this style and that style. So pulled all of those off. So now the, uh, main things remaining are the physical connections holding the whole pack together. So you can see, for example, uh, we've got a whole series of uh, 10 millimeter uh, nuts uh, holding the batteries down to kind of this metal tray. The other thing is this is a actively cooled battery pack. Uh, so we have literally coolant lines that run through the cells. Uh, so those need to be disconnected. And then we could start taking the pack apart for real. Using a quarter inch socket here. I think this is a silicon hose, silicone, which is good for high temperature and electrical resistance. And now this side's free. So now I got both these disconnected on this end of this section of the pack. I also removed the coolant hoses from the other end of this block of cells. 
and then I could remove the nuts that hold down a clamp that holds down this section of the battery. So the way the battery's held in is we've got a clip that was held down by these 10 millimeter nuts here and it kind of just holds down this edge of the battery and there's a permanent lip in the other side that sort of slides into. Uh, but the issue here is there's also some butyl tape which meant I had to use a pry bar to get this off. And unfortunately this butyl tape is also uh, just kind of holding this down. So I'm gonna just go around the back and give it a pull, pry it to uh, tip it back that way. And we're loose. Okay, so in front of us here, we have uh, just one block of the Chevy Volt battery. Um, right now you can see all the terminals are covered except these ones at the end. So basically it's a battery, but we don't know what the voltage is. So let's just take our voltmeter, put it on the two terminals here. And about 88 volts. Um, but if I look at the side of this thing, I can see there's a split right here. So what we can do, is we're gonna take off this cover. I'm just doing it gently and not getting the screwdriver too far underneath there, of course. So now we've got all the exposed terminals. So the last thing we wanna do is uh, drop a uh, screwdriver across there. Um, but we can see where the split is Obviously, we've got like a half a pack here, half a pack here. So now you can check the voltage again, and we should have essentially uh, two half packs. So we got 44 volts there, and 44 volts here. So what we could do is if we take off the bus bars in the middle, and then we would also have to remove this top strap, just wraps around. And then on the end here is we have nuts and threaded rod going through uh, down by the cooling ducts. And then we'd be able to take these two halves apart. Uh, maybe we could um, spin the one around, hook them back up in parallel. So we'd have 44 volts instead of 88, but double the capacity. That might be nice for a 48 volt style system. Now let's take a look at a different section of the battery pack. Here you can see, again, we've got one 44 volt section here, another 44 volt section here, and then this little section right here, uh, 22. So essentially, we've got one unit, one unit, and half of a unit. I think next I'll take off this end piece. Uh, looks like there's some contactors and maybe some other parts in there I can use still has a pair of short sections of the coolant hose. I'll have to disconnect those. Um, a bolt down on either side looks like it's kind of forked, so it can just slide off this way. But then there's also uh, two 10 millimeter nuts going up here, so I will take those out with my 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. So again, we got our quarter inch socket here for our hose clamps and then 10 millimeter socket driver. But we wanna make sure that ground wire is off and our hose here is ready to go. Same thing here on the other side. And we can set this to the side. For this long section of battery, it was the same thing again, removing the 10 millimeter nuts and then using a pry bar to get that clamping piece off the butyl tape and then just gently prying by hand to get the cells off the tape. And then the final section of battery is sort of this cross piece here. Again, the same process, pulling out the nuts, removing that crossbar and peeling the batteries away from the base. 
Uh, after this, it was back to the workbench to take a look at that first section of batteries we pulled out. So on the end plate here, you can see there's some threaded rod coming through here, one on either side of uh, the coolant lines. Um, and this is basically a, a nut or threaded insert um, as part of this plate. So this is kind of a giant screw we got to pull out from the other end. And before we do that, I just want to point out that I already removed the bus bars from the top. And in fact, uh, the one of them is non-conductive, so that's just a mechanical link to hold the two halves of the battery pack together. And now you can see how that has just absolutely uh, popped straight in half right down the middle there. So here's that one 88 volt section split into two 44 volt sections. Um, here you can clearly see uh, the coolant uh, down both sides. A threaded rod that goes through here. There's little, looks like uh, brass inserts that the threaded rod goes through. Um, some other things kind of interesting is, so this is a way to align things. We've got uh, a protrusion here, matches up with the recess here. Same a protrusion and a recess so that when you put this together, those have to line up and then that aligns our threaded rod and our coolant. Um, also for the coolant ports, you can see there's an O-ring on one side and not the other. And that matches up with this next piece without an O-ring and with an O-ring. So if I spin this one around now, we can see how this, we got a pin here, pin here, hole here, hole here, those line up. And then that, uh, puts our coolant connections on the lines and it lines up the holes for the threaded rods. So I have a project where I want essentially a 48 volt battery pack. Um, basically this is more or less 48 volts, same with that. Um, so I don't want them in series, I want them in parallel, but I want them physically connected in line uh, that way it's that certain size and shape, long and narrow, which fits the project. Uh, the other thing is that also means I've got these coolant lines that I can reuse for heating and cooling the battery. So on here, I've already got those uh, coolant lines on this end and on this end down here. So I think what I want is I just want to add one more section in the middle. So I think what I'm going to do is take this apart, grab a middle section, take it over here, put it in place, just make sure that all the pins line up, the gaskets are the right direction, everything like that, and then get some new longer threaded rod and squeeze the whole thing together to have three of these in a row. So I took apart one of the other sections of the pack, got a middle block of cells and added that so I now had three of them together in a row. Now, of course, the threaded rod that I had was too short. Fortunately, I had some six millimeter rod from a Nissan Leaf, and I put that through to at least get everything lined up. I also used a ratchet strap to try to squeeze the whole battery together. Now, unfortunately, that six millimeter rod from the Nissan Leaf was too long, and I couldn't find any uh, locally at the hardware store, plenty of quarter inch, that sort of thing, but not six millimeter. And what I decided is a quarter inch is only just a little bit larger than six millimeter. So I just drilled out the end plate and then I tapped it for a quarter 20 thread. So I just tapped all four of these holes and then I'll just test it by threading a quarter 20 bolt into it. And it threads through real nice. So I'll be able to thread through my quarter 20 threaded rod all the way through here. So we're in nice and solid on this end and I'll put nuts on the nuts and washers on the other end and I'll squeeze this just making sure everything is lined up.
Once the battery pack was squeezed nice and tight, I used my reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade in it to remove the excess length of the threaded rod. At this point, I think the video is getting a little long, so we'll uh, finish this off in a part two of this video where we'll take a close look at the cooling system, uh, we'll finish building this pack, and then we'll actually put it into the vehicle I'm hoping to use this with. Until then, stay charged up.